Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and WebcastOneLive.com. We are here and we're live at The View from the Pew with Reich Plekis and my studio host, Bob Montserrat. How are you today, Bob? Pretty good, pretty good. Wide awake, I think. Hey, you are vertical and not horizontal, as we say. <laughs> That's a good thing. But I feel like being horizontal. Don't say that. I rebuke that. I rebuke that. Sleeping. <laughs> Sleeping. That's Okay, I'll accept that one. Okay. Well, I'm glad that you're here. I was not here, and I, I know that Mac had a wonderful day in the studio yesterday. Yes. I hope you, I trust you all had a wonderful day with Mac as well. And as I was tending to business over in Joliet, the wonderful land of Joliet, the wonderful land of the Oz, we have Iowa's golden girl that's going to be calling in today with us. And I think that Ryan may have her on. We will see here. And we have Iowa's Golden Girl joining us, Miss Carrie McDowell. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? I am blessed. I am blessed. I love you. I love you too, Rike. You're a great man. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored to be on your show at the last minute. What a what a great surprise. Well, you know, we had a gentleman call me about 45 minutes ago, Ari, and said, my cell phone's acting up. It's all staticky, and I'm in a really bad area in North Carolina. I was like... I got this. You know, God know God orchestrates things for a reason, doesn't he? He does. He, he does. Well, yes, no kidding. And and you and I, we actually had a long conversation earlier today, and so who who would have known that this was going to happen as it did? Amen? No kidding. Only God would. And I'm glad you called me, Right, I love you. I love you, too. Um, I think Ryan's got a couple pictures he's going to pop up here. We're talking to none other than Iowa's Golden Girl. My sister from another mother, Carrie McDowell, <laughs> Carrie Hodge. It's the truth. It's the truth. It is. It is the, the truth. truth. And yep. and this girl has got a, a voice that is golden. She is a star of stardom. Okay. She is Barry Gordy's adopted child yep. from Heaven Sent here in Des Moines, IA, DMIA, Carrie McDowell Hodge. And Carrie, I know that you've been Heaven Sent. But just tell us, get, you know, we we've got we got about an hour, so you, you and I could talk forever and a day. But oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> tell me, is, is mom with you in the car again today? No, she's home, and everybody pray for her because she's having a hard day today. But you know, she's it's it's you know what one thing I'm thankful that I'm back in uh, Tennessee now because we were living in Houston, and my husband's still working for Lakewood, but. Said, you know, you need to go home and be with your family and help your mom out. So everybody out there, just pray for Sally. Just pray for her arthritis because it's really, really bad. And we so, love and Mother pray. Sally. We do. I got and to I talk to her Sally. yesterday on the phone, and she scolded me down and lifted me up. And <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, I tell you, I believe in prayer. So everybody, just lift her up in prayers for the pain. So. Amen. But Carrie, yes. you have been singing since the the ripe age of of the womb. I sure have. And and give us give, give us give us the synopsis because I don't have your biography in front of me. But as Ryan grabs your picture here, you started out at what the age of two or three years old. I was I actually started whistling. This is so funny, Reich. You're going to die laughing. I started whistling when I was nine months old. Oh my lord! And my mom and dad said. I loved the the attention and the clapping, and I started singing professionally when I was, or, or uh, started singing when I was three, and then professionally I started by the time I think I was seven or eight on the Bill Riley talent sprouts. And that's Bill Riley Senior. Yes, that's yes, that's that's uh, Bill Riley Senior. Yes, you got it. And from there, you traveled from stage to stage, county fair to county fair, state fair, variety club. Yes. Um, disco nights, summer days, Las Vegas. 
right? I went from there. Let's see. Let's see. I started with uh, at the Iowa State Fair. And from there, some people from uh, Las Vegas had heard about this little girl in Des Moines, Iowa, with this big voice. And uh, they flew in, and they saw me. And my manager at the time uh, was from Des Moines, Iowa. His name was Harold Gansert. And probably it was like I was, I think I was eight or nine years old. But uh, I flew into Vegas, and I opened for, um, uh, actually, Reno, Nevada. I'm sorry. And I opened for Rona Martin in Reno, Nevada. And I was nine years old. And that's when everything started to roll. I had my own band, that, and they were originally from Des Moines, Iowa, all, all of the musicians. Do you want to give a shout-out to any of those people? Do you remember yeah, their names? It was, yes, it was Love Train. It was Chet Skoog and Joe Grayola and um, Connie Leaders, who's a teacher, um, Brian Pearson, he was the bass player. Uh, my sister, Julie, was one of the background singers. Matt, my little brother, he used to come on and do impressions of Louis Armstrong and John Denver and uh, Glenn Campbell. And we we played all over uh, Des Moines. We played the Top of the Tower and uh, the Blue Max was actually uh, my first, you know, real gig in um, Des Moines, Iowa. Now, so just to let the, just a, let the viewing audience to know what's coming up here, the picture that you just saw was a picture of Michael and Carrie Hodge from mm-hmm. Two Hearts. That's the Christian group of Michael and Carrie. And then the picture that's mm-hmm. up now is Carrie McDowell, and that's the jazz girl that you'll hear about a little bit now, uh, a little later on in the segment in the program. But um, Love Train, what's what's one of the songs? Was that the No, uh-uh, no, no Casual Sex? No, 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 no. You're, you're, no. That Love was disco. Train was no, that was that was Motown. Motown. But um, uh, uh, no, uh, we started doing stuff like from the Carpenters. Uh, I'm on top of the world. Okay. Yeah, we did stuff from the Doobie Brothers. Uh, I mean, all of all of that stuff was Olivia Newton-John. I honestly love you. Uh, and that was with the, the family, the my group, Love Train. We did all kinds of stuff. You know, the, I mean, we actually did the that people all over the world join hands out of love train. You remember that song? Yeah, I remember the that song. That we made will be You're making me count yeah. my gray hairs, girl. <laughs> oh, I know, huh? <laughs> so from there, I, I toured all over. We toured over 350 uh, nightclubs. And dinner clubs, really, because it was a family show. And we traveled all over. And during that time when we were traveling across the country with Love Train, I would fly in and out of Vegas. Uh, from Reno, Nevada, from being with Rowan and Martin, they introduced me when I turned 10 to Liberace and flew me, flew me into um, Las Vegas. And we met my mother and I and Harold, we met uh, Liberace, and he pulled me on the show uh, up on his on the stage, and he said, "Could you let's do somewhere over the rainbow?" And uh, so we started, and within like four four measures, the people just stood up, and um, he turned to me. He goes, "Well, Carrie, looks like you got the job." So, uh, and he was wonderful. I love Liberace. Now that I is your him. signature song, and I was listening to that, yeah. and, and I called That's you. Over the rainbow. I called you on the phone earlier as I was driving back from Illinois, and I said, "Shut the back door." <laughs> I said yeah. this, and, I, and this is probably your best mm-hmm. arrangement. Uh, somewhere over the rainbow, and you said that God really just ordained that between you and oh, Michael one night in the studio. He did. I mean, really, like I told you the truth, that was uh, God. That was a fluke, but it really wasn't a fluke. It was God. We went into studio in Houston, in Michael's studio, and it was late one night, and he said, let's just lay down the track right now and kind of get a feel for it. And we dimmed the lights. We put on a couple of candles and laid it down, and that was literally right the first take. And Michael was, you know, Michael, he's such a musician. He's a producer, a songwriter, and he wants everything to be perfect. And I said, you know what? It is perfect. God, I really feel like God did bless that song. So I'm I'm very thankful that you're saying that. So it was a precious moment. It really, really was. Well, and, and I tell you, that song is so touching. It means a lot to everybody. I know that Jerry Lewis had you sing that song mm-hmm. multiple, multiple years at the telethon. He sure did. And, yeah, um, he sure did in, in Vegas, yeah. Yep. Tell us about the telethon. How did you get hooked up with Jerry? 
Well, that's another thing. When I was in um, Vegas with Liberace, the Jerry Lewis telethon was always broadcast from Las Vegas. So when I was there at the age of 10, year old, 10 years old, they called him, my management did, and said this would be perfect guest. When Jerry heard that I was 10 years old, saw the videos, he said, bring her on over. And that was the first time. I think I did it like, I want to say eight or nine times. But I started when I was 10 years old. And I'll tell you what, even the first time, I will never forget meeting him. He was like a little kid. He came to rehearsal. And I was rehearsing with the orchestra the day before, and he came and he started acting just crazy. And my mom looked over and thought, who is that guy? And he was jumping over the chairs and acting just crazy. And it was Jerry Lewis. And I was on the floor. I was a little girl, you know. And uh, he came right up to me and he just kissed my hands like I was like a little princess. And uh, he said, I think you're up, Carrie. And so that's how I met Jerry Lewis. And he was wonderful. He's just, I mean, when you think back to all that nutty professor and everything he did, it's, he loved to make people laugh. Absolutely. And that's how it started. And I started to do that. And um, from there, I went and I did uh, Florida with George Burns. I opened for George Burns and back to Reno, Nevada with Danny Thomas. And um, got to be on for the first time in my life when I was 10. I was on uh, the Johnny Carson Tonight Show, and Rona Martin introduced me, and Don Rickles was the guest host that night. The blessings just abound, kept abounding and abounding upon you. Did you ever well, realize that you would see those things happen? You know, right, this is kind of funny, but I can honestly say this. My dad used to say when I was a little girl that this is a gift from God. And you need to use it as much as you can. And he and he would like tell me, get into it and paint a picture that this gift is from God. And I, I believe it. I really, I mean, in all honesty, I believe that it's a gift from God because you can't teach with that little girl, me, you know, what, what she was doing and what she knew. And I loved singing. I thought every little girl sang, really, sure. until I really grew up to a, a an age that I understood it all. Um and I loved it. I, I didn't think, honestly, I never thought that I would get to work and, and have Barry Gordy for a manager and get to open for Smokey Robinson and sing with the, the Temptations. I never thought that. No. Oh, man. We are but, speaking with Iowa's golden child, Carrie McDowell Hodge, today at The View from the Pew. My sister from another mother. We're going to take a station break here in just a moment. If you have any questions, call us at 855-244-0077 or hit Bob at the chat. Me on my Facebook page will take your questions there. We're going to come back in a very short segment break, and we're going to come back with a segment from Lakewood, um, a song called Healing Rain, and get ready to be touched because this woman of God is being used mightily wherever she sets her feet on foundation. This woman has just been anointed to come and go as God pleases with her. Um, it's Carrie McDowell Hodge. Right now she's in Nashville and doing what God has ordained her to do. She has a new hit coming out. You can find it on iTunes, CD Baby, on her webpage. You can find it on my page. It's Carrie McDowell, Carrie McDowell Hodge. Talk about the girl, but more so, we're going to be praying for her mom, Sally McDowell, as well. So we've got Carrie on the phone through the studio with me. Tune in, turn on, turn it up. If you have any questions, be sure and hit us at 855-244-0077. As you can all tell, I'm stretching this out because I can't see the clock across the studio from me. And I do have a question. And you do have a question. So go ahead, Bob. You got a minute. We only have a minute, but uh, Miss Biggs is saying, what does Carrie remember about Stillwell Junior High? Oh, oh Miss Biggs. I remember Ms. her too. Miss Biggs. I do remember her. Those were fun. She was a drama fun. teacher, right? Yeah, I, th I think she was. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking that too. Hey, Miss Big, shout out. Woo, Hi, woo. Miss Big. <laughs> oh, Stillwell was great days for me. I loved it. I loved Stillwell Tigers, man. We were the Tigers. I loved it. Absolutely. I have a, a, a question that just hit me on my chat. Who's that handsome African American man that she's in the arms of? That's Barry Gordy. That's we Barry have Gordy. Carrie McDowell Hodge on the phone with us all the way from Nashville. We'll take your questions at 855 244 0077 here live with Reich Plekis and Bob Montserrat in the studios. This girl is Iowa's golden child. We want to tell you more about her life and what's coming up right after this. Stay tuned. Tune in, turn on, but turn it up. 
If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for Him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. Yes, now your favorite programs on Webcast One Live can all be watched and listened to on any Android or Apple device. Your phone, tablet, or iPad. Yes, your favorite shows on Webcast One Live are available live or on podcast wherever you go. Let me introduce to you some of our great shows. Shalom. Every week on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman, we'll talk about issues in the Middle East, issues related to the Jewish tradition and religious traditions in general, and keep you up to date on exactly what's going on around the world. You may know some of the story, but you haven't heard all of the story until you've heard it on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman and our special guests we have on every week. Hi, I'm Doc. You listen to me every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. on Doc and Lefty Radio Podcast Program, where we discuss all the relevant topics of the day, including state, local, and national politics. My partner in crime, Lefty, often likes to have a little bit of conservative justice served upon him. So please turn in for the fireworks every week from 6 to 7 p.m. on Tuesdays at webcast1live.com. Thank you. So when you want to watch your favorite Webcast One program, remember, there's an app for that. You know, there's an app for that. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Get away from us, you mean old credit card. We don't have any more money. We're in trouble now. Save us! Help! Somebody save us! Somebody help! Help! Save us! Hi, I'm Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of Des Moines. If your credit card's a little too animated, give us a call. child carrie mcdowell hodge on the line with us here at the view from the pew with right Plex and bob montserrat today carrie that song healing rain when you sang it at lakewood um i watched that video probably i, I bet i watched that a hundred thousand times a year i bet they get more hits on me on youtube than anybody else <laughs> thank you i appreciate it <laughs> um what was I need it, more hits. What was it like ministering that particular song at Lakewood? Wow. Well, first off, when I heard the song, um, the the uh, the man that used to be at Lakewood be their uh, choir director, Dakri Brown. He uh, got offered a job with Hillsong. He was the one that said to me, "Man, you could just." kill healing rain and i said well what what's that what song is that and so he sent me the file michael w smith wrote that he was one of the writers on that song and um i just listened to the story and really the times we're in it's i don't know it's just but kind of hard these days it can be kind of hard for everybody i think and um when I when I heard the words and I heard the story, I just thought it was absolutely beautiful. 
absolutely beautiful. And, um, I mean, when the choir started in at rehearsal and started singing, I mean, I turned around and sobbed because it just sounded like angels behind me. And, um, honestly, the minute that I stepped my foot on the platform, I always say, Holy Spirit, sing through me. And I really believe he has because he's used that song in, in many different ways, many different countries. And, um, I love that song. I love that. It's a very moving song, and I'm honored that I got a chance to introduce it there at Lakewood. Man. Now, you and Michael have traveled extensively in, in music ministry. I mean, Australia and Austria yep. and Germany and the uh, the U.K. and everywhere I've never been. Um, <laughs> I, would love for you, I would love for you to come to Holland with us. I love going into Holland and ministering in, in Paris. We, we minister at a beautiful little church in Paris, and uh, Pastor Ettore is just wonderful. But, uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's one of the blessings, I think, to get to travel, and I love, I still love traveling. We have a 12-year-old son, Gabriel, and he loves traveling. We're getting his passport renewed next week so we can go next year uh, into Holland and then into Paris. And we have some gigs there, so. Now, Gabe's a drummer, right? Excuse me? Gabe is a drummer? He drums and Reich. Next time when we're alone, I'm going to have him sing for you because he has such beautiful vibrato and everything. He gets real embarrassed, but I'm like, honey, God gave you this gift. He goes, Mama, it came from you. <laughs> I just laughed, you know. He's so, he's such a, oh, gosh, he just. He made us into a family, and I'm so grateful for him. Amen. So. Such a God's yeah. gift, yes. Tell me, um, you and Michael, you got to work together at Lakewood. Um, now, is Michael's position, is he music director there, music minister? What does what does he actually do, or what did both, you do there? Both of those. Actually, both of those. He's uh, one of the musical directors, and he's lead guitarist there. And he also has uh, a meeting that he meets with once a month with all the musicians. And he speaks and prays, and they go into uh, worship. They just, it just, he says, sometimes they'll start into worship, and God will just take them away, and they'll be in there an hour just worshiping with music and everything. He loves it. I know you said that. I know you said that the corporate worship is just out of this world, and and, and that that's a blessing. You know, that's what God wants us to do is just give ourselves to him in corporate worship. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay, now I have a question that came on on my uh, Facebook here. Tell me about uh, Barry Gordon, Barry Gordy, and Motown, and Carrie on Broadway, Off Broadway. Well, I I actually did um, the the me nobody knows when I was sixteen, and um, when I was sixteen, uh, you know, I mean, I don't, I do not recommend this, but I ran away. I ran away from home. And I moved to New York, um, and I met some friends there, and I lived with this wonderful couple. But that's how I got involved with Showtime. It was an off-Broadway play for Showtime television called The Me Nobody Knows. And that's how I got that. I, I, I did a, a Jordash commercial, a Coca-Cola commercial. And um, from there, I stayed in New York for several years and did some things like that, commercials and stuff and demos. And then about the age, about 19, I, I came back home and, um, you know, mended my relationship with my whole family, actually, my mom. And, and um, I, I moved in and stayed with my dad for a while. But unfortunately, when I was younger, my mom got involved with my manager. And um, my mom and dad were divorced at the time. But, uh, you know, she fell in love. And just a young girl, I think being a young, young girl, sometimes girls have, girls and mothers go through things. And we obviously did. So by the time I was 19, I realized this is so ridiculous. That's my mom. And I moved back home and um, started singing there with a phenomenal band called Uptown Function. John Raisley was uh, the percussion player. Oh, my gosh, whoever. Chris was on keyboards, this big, beautiful black man, Chris Davis, who was a mother on keyboards. Ken Anderson, who is now my manager, he was on bass guitar. Jay Alcorn was on uh, guitar. And we had a wonderful, awesome band. And we played all over uh, Des Moines. 
And then from there, I moved to California. And that's where I got discovered. This gal, uh, uh, John and I were living there, and I was we were actually managers of, a, of an apartment complex. And at the time, you know, I didn't have a lot of money at all. I mean, so I thought, well, we could do this job, live at this apartment for free. And um, this girl came in and said, Carrie, I've been listening to you sing, and I have some friends that are up at Motown, and you need to, you know, do a demo and get it up to Motown. And I thought, oh, wow, yeah, okay. So maybe it was a month later, and I called the number that she gave me, and it was Willie Hutch. And he wrote, he's the writer on I'll Be There, Michael Jackson's song. Yep. Um, and uh, so I went in there, and I auditioned, and but probably, and it was going to be with two white girls and three black girls, and they were going to call it Star Cross. And um, so uh, I went in, I auditioned. Willie said, can you come back on Friday? So I said, sure. So I came back on Friday, and it was just me at the studio with Willie. So I thought, well, they're probably doing, you know, private auditions and wants to see if I can do this or do that. So anyway, we started, I started singing and he said, listen, I, I really feel in my heart, I need to take you up to the chairman. Well, I, you know, I, I never heard that expression before and I didn't know what he was talking about, but I knew it was a man of, you know, mighty, who, who knows, you know, this mighty man on this, you know, whatever. So I said, sure. So about three weeks later, I went in and at Motown at Hitsville in Los Angeles, and I met Barry Gordy. And literally, he said, you know, he sat down next to me, and I saw this little man walking in with this tennis racket and these tennis clothes, and he plops down next to me, and I thought, man, this guy has the wrong room. And uh, I said, well, who are you? And he goes, well, who are you? And then he laughed. He goes, I'm Barry Gordy. I said, oh, I'm Carrie. And he said, well, you're ready to do what you do? And I said, sure. And I walked right in, and I sang a song, and it was so cute, so sweet. I, I love, I just love Barry. He leaned back in his chair, and he held his head, and he was smiling, that beautiful smile that he has, ear to ear. And I thought, wow, at least he loves what he hears. And not but a month later, I was signed to him to Motown, and then he was my manager for several years. Wow. Yeah, I think I was 20 or 21. Okay. I was golden girl, the golden child, Carrie McDowell Hodge. And now fast, well, well, well let's talk about this song. Uh-uh, no, no casual sex. What was that? Was that Motown? Yeah, that was Motown, and actually, I begged Barry. I said, "Please, let's put out when a woman loves a man," because I I love the ballads. I'm always about ballads, and and at the time, George Michael's "I Want Your Sex" was real big. So Barry said, "Maybe we could do something and try this out." Well, I uh-uh, no no casual sex was bigger in Europe than it ever was here, and um. You know, it was just an experiment that he wanted to do, and then he released When a Woman Loves a Man. But uh, it was about just a girl going to clubs and dancing and just loving the music, but it was like, you're not going to take me home, baby, and that's what the words were all about. And I thought, at least it's a good, it's a, a, a good, uh, it has a good message, you know, because I wasn't about that anyway, you know, and not that I was a good girl, because we all go through things, and I've done things I wish I never did, but I thought, this is a good message, but... My whole family was like, why don't, why doesn't he release that when a woman loves a man? So everybody, you know, uh, you know, all my family was like, well, he should do this one. He should release this one. But I said, you know what? The chairman's the chairman and he's going to release what he wants. So that's right. That's right. <laughs> and I had a great time up at Motown. I, I mean, those were days that were awesome. I lived with Ian Grace at the time and, uh, you know, I listened and I learned from him, and um, I, I'll tell you what, I wish there would have been years and years and years, and even now, I visit him all the time, and he, it's just really amazing, right, to hear his stories and to listen to him. It's, he's just a beautiful human being. Now, they've just written a play about Motown, correct? Yeah, he invited me to the opening, and it was, right, you gotta go see it, it's 
unbelievable. The story of Motown. All right. Now, Carrie, fast forward. I got to meet with Kent Anderson yesterday, your manager. Um, is he also your executive producer or is Michael your executive producer? No, Kent is. Kent is, okay. Michael, Michael has done, you know, hey, Michael has done unbelievable things. So, But on this project, this particular project, it is Kent. Okay, so I took a picture of po- and posted a picture of Michael or of Kent and I. Uh, I sent that to you. I on, got on, it. His hair is just as whacked as mine is. I love oh, him. <laughs> I know. I, I, I call him Einstein. I'm like, you're crazy. We we met at Yoke in uh, South on South Michigan Avenue in downtown Chicago, and um, it was funny because we ate and, and I mean we talked and talked and talked for an hour, and we went to leave. And as we were walking out. Um, uh, African American gentleman says, "Hello, professor. Professor, how are you today, professor?" <laughs> <laughs> and this man kept just kept, kept calling him professor. And I said, "Wait, wait, wait. We got to go back in. We can't. We got to get out of the sun." So we ran back in, and we both put on our sunglasses. And the girl goes, "What's up?" I said, "I got to put on my Jack Nicholson glasses. You had to take a picture." I said, "I got to send this to my sister out in Nashville." And so we both put on our sunglasses. And the girl goes, "You have your folder backwards." And I had your your portfolio, so oh. I flipped it back around so we could see your uh-huh. picture. So that's the picture that I sent to you was of, of Kent and I I'm yesterday. Kent so loves he I- is awesome. We have Iowa's golden child, Carrie McDowell Hodge, on the phone with us. We're taking your questions at eight five five two four four zero zero seven seven or on the blog with Bob. Call in, tune in, turn it on, turn it up here at KTIA FM ninety nine point three, and also the View from the Pew. We love us. I'm Carrie McDowell. We've got an exciting event coming up, but I can't say anything about it right now. So tune in, turn on, turn it up. We'll be right back after this. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm Administrative Manager. I'm the Senior Technician. I'm Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture um, that we're going to do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do. And if we guarantee it's going to be a good experience for you or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're going to do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. (laughs) You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now and then leave and then come back, charge you again, and and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed today. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me, but is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did was perfect. It was great. (laughs) Keep going, though. I like this. (laughs) Just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. Thank you. 
talking with Iowa's golden child, Carrie McDowell Hodge. Happy talk by Rogers and Hammerstein. Having a dream come true, Carrie. I know that you are living that dream. Amen. 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 You better walk back. Back. You better walk back to that phone, girl. No, come on. I, I was thinking. You know what's so funny? I'm right. Bringing my Shih Tzu down from the bed. <laughs> Jump, so he'll start barking, and I thought I gotta get him down right now. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> we gotta give a shout out to Jessica Clark. Jessica just tuned in for the first time today here at the View from the Hill. Welcome, Jessica. Thanks for tuning in. You know, um, Carrie, going from Des Moines, Iowa, to you know, to uh, New York, to L.A., to Nashville, to Dallas, to the U.K., back to Nashville, and and doing the things you're doing. Now God has brought you, you know, full circle to record Talk About the Girl. Yeah. A, a new a, a new jazz CD, big band, big band sound, correct? Mm-hmm. What, big band tell me, what, band. what brought you to this? I mean, you, I, you and I have been talking, so I knew that this was coming. So what brought you to this? I mean, has this always kind of been a love? Oh, my gosh. You know what? Yeah, a love with music. I mean, I, I, I mean, if I look at my whole life, which is so, I mean, I'm, I'm in the middle of writing a book. I'm almost done with my book, right? It's crazy. I, I love music. So I, I wish my father was still alive to hear this because he loved these old songs. My mom, they loved Corcovado. I mean, they listened to that. They listened to Herb, Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass and all that stuff. Steve and Edie. Uh, I mean, Perry Como, that beautiful music. I mean, I was raised with everything from that to Leon Russell to Shaka Khan to Diana Ross to Stevie Wonder. So my dad loved music. I really, really know that God gave me this gift. And my dad brought it out of me. He always would say that. But it's I, I just I'm honored to be a part of this, just like the Christmas CD a couple of years ago. Right. That was my dream to do. Uh, an orchestrated with a full orchestra, 72 pieces, and it was with the Prague Symphony. And that was such a dream of mine. Well, this is another dream of mine. And, um, it, you know, thank God Kent, you know, believed in me enough. And the Johnsons and uh, the Lindleys and people that invested in my project that believed in this, because without them, I couldn't have done it because we paid for this. Uh, this project, and um, I'm just honored to be a, pro- a, a part of it. I love my life. I love what I'm doing. You know, I'm not perfect, and I make mistakes like everybody does, but I'm so grateful for the gift that God has given me. I I, I, I know I'll go to my grave singing, so. Amen. Tell me about the, the Christmas CD. I know that you said uh, when you sent that project to me several years back that y- you walked in to um, hear the, the Prague Symphony um, orchestra and and just you said you were like taken back or in awe or overwhelmed yeah. and, and just said I'm gonna record with them. How did that happen? Well, I I have been bothering, really bugging Michael for months and months that we have to do a Christmas CD. We've got to do a Christmas CD. Well, I drove him out of his you know just batty, and finally he said, okay, I'm I'm I work with. With Don Cook here, he's a producer in Nashville, a wonderful Christian man who's uh, who. If you if you know of Don Cook and the things he's done, he's just wonderful. Well, he goes to Prague to put uh, 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 violins on strings on his projects, and was telling Michael. Michael said, "Don, you got to help me out. Carrie wants to do this project Christmas CD with uh, a symphony, and I don't know where to go." And Don told Michael. You've got to go to Prague and use their symphony. It's beautiful. And that's how that came into play. And um, it never actually got released. So Kent and I are talking about re-releasing it because nobody's ever even known that I've had a Christmas. Absolutely. Yet. Give me give me, give me, me an opener off the CD. You sang part of it to me in the car. Oh, I did. I love that. It's the most wonderful time of the year. That's like my favorite song. <laughs> So, you know, with the jingle bell, you know, it just goes crazy. I know you're you know, dancing in your kitchen because I can feel I, it. No, I'm dancing in my bathroom. <laughs> I am. My shih tzus are looking at me right now like, Mom, you're so crazy. But, uh, 
You know, we, I have to say this. You you came back to the Des Moines Playhouse and blessed the the Christmas um, event there with that. And you also did that um, opener for the uh, Valley High School, your old alma mater. Yep, um, you, nice. you did their holiday event um, probably four or five years ago there as well. And hey, now, that was only two years ago, so quit, man. You're aging us big time. You know, once you turn 50, the new 35, you just forget <laughs> about everything. But anyway. No, I just turned 40, so, you know. <laughs> Got to respect my elders. There we go. There we go. And, and, but you do need to re release that because I listen to that. I celebrate Christmas in July. You know, I get out all my Christmas CDs in the summer. Not that I'm praying for snow. Right. It's just that I love Christmas music. And so people think I'm whacked. But well, I will get. Are. I will get. I am. I'll get out my Kirk Franklin, you know, uh, oh, Christmas CD, and I yeah. will. I will get out my my uh, Pointer Ooh. Sisters Christmas. I will get out my. I will get out everything, and right. just listen to like fifty CDs straight through. Uh, you no know, kid. What about Nat King Cole, man? Oh Woo. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I and I, I listened to your Christmas CD probably just last month actually, and and you know, uh, Laura was like, Dad, really. Really? Do we have to travel around the Lexus <laughs> listening for, to Christmas songs? <laughs> for Laura to say that, that's, you know, she loves music. She does. Now you have sang with some of the the best indie artists, Lori Smith. I'm giving a shout out to your sister, Lori oh, Smith from I Chicago. Know, I love you. And uh, Helen Baylor, Helen's, you know, on on what Facebook. A, yes, what an awesome woman. Thanks to you, you introduced me to her. I've always listened to her. Uh, what a what a wonderful woman, huh? Mighty woman of God, huh? Amen. So what? what's next? I mean, I know that we're working on this jazz thing, which we won't say much about. Get ready, Iowa. But what's next for Carrie McDowell Hodge and, and Mr. Michael Hodge? Is it a, another, it's maybe the Christmas CD release? Are you guys looking to do another recording in the UK or? Well, that's funny that you asked because we are. We're, we're talking about several things right now. I've been, uh, uh, I went to California, Michael and I did just, uh, just a couple of weeks ago and I get to visit again, um, Dolly Martin. And so we stay up in Malibu with Dolly, Dick Martin's wife. And, um, I got hooked up with this guy named Brad Chambers and his show is called Martini in the Morning. He's a wonderful guy and, uh, he's going to be going out for uh, between 40 and 60 dates next year and has asked me to headline that with Steve Tyrell. Okay, so remember I, remember this. I am your armor bearer. I need to go carry your suitcase. Well, you've always, you'll, <laughs> hey, are you kidding? You'll, you'll, you'll keep everything at bay and start praying in tongues. <laughs> I love it. Shambhala, so, shambhala. Uh, yeah, no kidding. No kidding. So, um, and also finishing up my book, which I want to get that finished, but um, I, you know what? A dream of mine really is, and God's really opening these doors because even in, in uh, this business, which I love music, and, and I know that I can sing from pop to R&B to jazz to big band to so, uh, but it's, it's been such a blessing to see God move in some of these interviews, right, that I've had live just like we're doing today. And they'll ask me, just like this Brad Chambers that. uh you know, had me out on his show. Uh, he even said, where in the heck have you been? Stay tuned. We're with Iowa's Golden Child. Shout out to Dan Amos, a Valley alum as well. Tune in to The View from the Pew with uh, Carrie McDowell Hodge, my Golden Child, Iowa Golden Child guest. We'll be right back after this with more Carrie here at The View from the Pew and 99.3 KTIA. Remember, tune in, turn on, and turn it up. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drink, dance, party. 
Kitties is the ultimate dance club in Des Moines. A huge dance floor with room to move, three bars to keep your drinks full, and kicking DJs playing all your favorite dance music. At Kitties, we've always got your birthday party planned with Birthday Fridays. That's right, when your birthday rolls around, there's only one place to go. Gather up your friends and head to Kitties, where you drink free on the Friday of your birthday week. Find out more about Birthday Fridays at KittiesUSA.com. Kitties, all kinds of people, all kinds of music, all kinds of fun. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for Him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Hodge, Iowa's Golden Child. Carrie, that is your signature song, and that's that's not even the, the heartbeat of that song. I, I think I played that like five times coming back from Joliet, Chicago today. Mm, thank you, Mike. And and I, I have to tell you this. I truly, truly believe that that is your best ever mm. recording wow. of that song, and you said that that was one take. That's, Thank you. that's called anointing. That truly is called anointing. And to everybody that's listening on 99.3, you can get Carrie's new album. It's under Carrie McDowell, under her, her maiden name. The album is called Talk About the Girl. You can get it on CD, baby. You can get it on iTunes. You can get it on Amazon. Um, I talked to Kent. It's been released. Support Carrie McDowell, Carrie McDowell Hodge in this new effort. The CD will rock you. I mean, if you love big band, if you love strings, if you love jazz, if you love Somewhere Over the Rainbow, this CD will pierce your heart and you will want to bless somebody with this, this music. But Carrie, that is the best song. I mean, I, I did. I played it. For, I put it on disc repeat. I put it on song repeat in my Lexus. Wow. Wow. That's so nice of you to say that. Thank you. That song, I think, means a lot to a lot of people. It's just. It's just simpler days, you know. Have you ever met Liza Minnelli, Judy's daughter? Uh, I would have loved to, but no. You talk about a performer. No, I never have met her. I never have met her. Did you ever, now, I know you've sang that song forever in a day. Hmm? Um, did you ever, I know you, you've you ministered that on Jerry Lewis's telethon, right? Yep, on Johnny Carson. John, I was going to say, did you sing it on Johnny Carson as well? Sure did on Merv Griffin show on the uh, late night with uh, Arsenio Hall. I mean, I wow, I've sung yeah 
that song all over. Is it your favorite song or does it just minister to you? Tell us about why that, why Somewhere Over the Rainbow? I think, you know, at the time, uh, as a little girl, they were really, I could sing these beautiful ballads and love ballads. and But really, what does a little girl know at nine? She doesn't. They're not supposed to know about love and the sadness or the hurt or this world. or And so when my mom and my management were talking about doing a song like this, they said she really needs a song that would really adapt itself uh, to a little girl. And so when they came up with Somewhere Over the Rainbow, I mean, my mom was teaching it to me on the plane when I was uh, started to, when I, we were on the way to uh, California to do the Tonight Show. But I think, you know, I've met so many people all over, in and out of the church, that that song they just love. And like I said, it's just, it sings of simpler times. Sorry about the noise in the background. My husband's building a studio. In our house. That's all right. Juliet says, do you have any words of wisdom for somebody coming up in especially the, the music ministry arena? Um, what to do or what not to do? As far as, is she going into the Christian? or She's just, going into Christian gospel. I would just tell her to sing it every, every opportunity that she can sing, take it and do it no matter what. Because every, every step, every song, every place that she ministers is a step, just a notch in her belt that God's given her this talent. And it, it's really good experience. Everything, I don't really, I got to say, even the bad in my life, and let me tell you, I've had some, it's, it still makes us stronger. And I would just say, sing wherever you can sing. Amen. What would you say of a witness, being a witness, what would be one thing, what's, what's one regret that you have in, in regards to either your music or your ministry? Um, wow. I, I, I don't know. I, I think, uh, you know, I wish maybe that things, uh, you know, when, when Barry was not feeling well and he had lost several of his good friends and he was selling Motown, I wish that I could have been a part of Motown in earlier years. Do you know what I mean? Not that I just, it, it, it was closing and he was getting rid of it at the time when he had signed me. Um, you know, uh, but, but regrets, I don't know. I, I, uh, I, I, to me, really, right, it's all been, you, you learn, and, and either you grow, you, you grow better or bitter, and even through the bad times, I don't want to be a person that grows bitter in my life. I want to be uh, just a good human being. I want to, I want to grow old gracefully, and really, anything, which I think is kind of silly, but any kind of wisdom that I have about singing, it's, I just, I would rather give it away. Because, and to help everybody, just like what you and I were talking about earlier, it's not about Carrie. It's really about the journey in each of our lives and who we help and who we give a hand to, to step up rather than pulling them down. Amen. Amen. Well, our time is up, Carrie, um, my sister from another mother. What a blessing. And, and tell Michael and Gabriel and t give your mom, Sally, a big old hug and squeeze from this big old teddy bear. I that, will. That's the next song you need to record, my teddy bear. It has been a blessing. I talked to you forever on the phone today in the car and listened to your music, but more so got to hear you here on the airwaves. I was Golden Child, Carrie, Carrie McDowell Hodge. And um, I tell you, the, the music just keeps blessing. Keep doing what God has told you to do. Tonight, grab some good old virgin olive oil, pour it all over Sally's head and lay hands on her, lay hands yeah. on her knees and her hips and say, get up, Lazarus, you yeah. know, Amen. And, and, and she's got a lot of work left in her to do. Amen. Thank you, Rike. Carrie, it, Carrie, we have a lot of work to do ourselves. I'm looking so forward yeah. to working with you in December. We'll get those dates out. I, I spoke to uh, the powers to be after you and I got off the phone today. I love you. Love, I love me some Carrie McDowell. 
I do. I love you too. Thank you. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Bob, it's another day, another dime, another dollar, another holler here at The View from the Pew. Oh, yeah. I'm just, you're getting to let me meet and listen to people I've never known. It's great. Have you, are you a jazz music person? No. Well, you are now. I'm going to get you the CD. <laughs> it's yeah. been a blessing here. Carrie, thanks so much. I'll be back in touch with you soon. Reich okay, Plekis, have a great evening. Absolutely. Reich Pleck is here at 99.3 KTIA FM. The View from the Pew. Until next week, tune in, turn on, but turn it up in Jesus' name. Amen.